My name is Joseph. I have lived in Utah all my life. I am a born-again Christian, though I have not always been a born-again Christian. Um, a little bit about my family background. My dad, he actually used to be in the LDS church. He served a mission in England. Eventually, he met my mom, who all was actually in a Mormon fundamentalist group. It was, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to give the name, but I don't remember the details, how exactly they met, but my dad, he found her and he was, he basically joined that group and eventually because of that, he got excommunicated from the LDS church. Some of the things I heard from my dad is that he was, he was searching for more truth. He was really wanting to know more and just to know maybe anything more that God might have for him. So he believes that this is where God led him. But it was interesting. Eventually, my parents, they actually got excommunicated from that group. And this is when I was a baby. So this fundamental group, we would call it the branch. And it's kind of funny because once my parents got kicked out of the branch, my dad started calling his little family circle the twig, kind of like their uh, religious circle. So I grew up as basically a fundamental Mormon. And this was a fundamental group where they practiced polygamy. So my dad, he had four different wives. The first one came and went before I was even born. Um, the three other ones, they were there when I, uh, all of my upbringing until I was 18. So I grew up with three moms, bunch of, bunch of siblings, you know, and there was, there was some good times. There was always a lot of siblings and brothers and sisters to play with outside, especially in the days before cell phones were big. So we were just out having a good time, just playing in the yard, doing whatever. And... You know, and having three moms, um, we were told that living this way, my dad being a polygamist, this was basically what God really wants for everyone. This was like a higher principle, quote unquote, that we were taught and that, that there was blessings with this. Um, we were told as kids to not tell anyone about this. You know, that this was something that many people would not understand. We even were told that, you know, we could get in potential trouble, especially my dad, if anyone ever found out that he was living polygamy because this was illegal at the time. It still may be illegal in Utah. I think the laws on that have changed. But um, so I, I grew up always believing in God, um, believing in Jesus, you know, whatever Jesus I believed in at the time uh not not nearly the jesus i knew i know now but you know i grew up basically being taught that if i can just keep all the commandments and be the best i can be that i could that eventually i can come i could go to heaven so you know growing up there were a lot of times i felt like i basically had to keep a checklist um of the Ten Commandments, just always making sure I'm keeping the Ten Commandments right. And, you know, because I had this, <clears throat> I had this, I guess, anxiety, whatever you want to call it, that what if I find out that I missed one of the commandments and God, you know, God judges me for that and I don't go to heaven. And so I felt like I was really living under this big burden and this big weight of this religion that I had, like my own personal religion. And especially looking back now, it really felt like I was robbing myself of the true joy and freedom that you can have in Christ and, and the grace that you can have in Jesus. And so growing up, 
I'm just like, you know, if this is really the way it's supposed to be, you know, the, the Christian life or just the way that any saint is supposed to be right with God and living under this weight of commandments, then I don't feel like it's a very happy or fulfilling journey. And, you know, looking back, I, I feel like I really understand now the difference between a religion and true freedom and grace in a relationship with Christ. So going back, going back now of kind of how the conversion began. <clears throat> so my dad being a polygamist, eventually he became a monogamist, just, just him and my mom, which is how it is today. One of the wives kind of drifted away. I, I feel like maybe they realized over time they didn't have much in common you know, sharing her husband with other wives, you know. I remember as a young kid, there were actually many nights seeing my mom and one of the wives argue a lot about whose turn it was to spend the night with my dad. And, you know, and there's still a lot of fundamental groups out there today, and there's still a lot of heartache and pain and strife with sister wives. But anyway... So that's, that's what it was for me growing up. Well, when he became monogamous, so let me back up a bit. My dad, he can tend to be very independent and likes to be his own boss. But the significant thing that I saw was when he became monogamous, it really left him in a soft spot in life and, he, and a vulnerable spot. And he was more willing to go check out other churches and kind of like submit for a time under other church bodies. Well, this is when I was 18 when I visited a Bible church for the first time. And the first day I went, I, I liked it right away. The people were very nice. I felt like I, there was a real strong spirit there of just freedom and grace and joy and I'm like this is this is amazing because this is this feels legit and what I thought was the fruits of the spirit growing up was nothing like what I'm feeling here like this is true like grace and 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 peace well so yeah, so this this is a called Orchard Hills Bible Church. And anyway, so we were going as a family for a couple months. Uh, lucky for me, I, I loved it there. So I kept going on my own even after my family stopped going with me. I had my own car. That's just this was just after high school. Well actually no this was this was this was during my high school when this was when this first started. But you know what? This is just the beginning. There was still quite a big process to all this. So there was still much baggage I had from all the beliefs, all the things I've been taught growing up about the Book of Mormon, about Joseph Smith. But yeah, it was a journey. Another thing, I, ha I have an older brother who also, he was going through his testimony. So nearly a year later after I first visited that Bible church, my older brother, he was actually dating a LDS Mormon girl. And he was, you know, obviously had the question, okay, so this girl, she was in the the traditional LDS church today, which is different than a fundamental LDS group. So my brother had the obvious question, okay, I need to come to know what I really believe because, you know, if I ever marry this girl, I, I'm going to have to either join the church or, or it will be a tough journey. So my brother, he would talk to missionaries. He would do a lot of research. He would pray. 
Um, just one of the, just hearing one of the stories from his testimony, before he saw the missionaries on a certain day, he pre-prayed and asked God how he should respond to the missionaries for that day. And so what he did was he prayed and then he flipped through the Bible, just seeing what God would show him through the scriptures. Well, he came across the passage in Matthew where Jesus talks about beware of those who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty powerful, you know, because because if you understand LDS missionaries, they what the quote unquote good news they have to bring you is believing in Christ, but all these extra works you got to do to go to heaven. And that's what I was living for the first 18 years of my life. I was I was really focusing more on works and I was not putting enough focus on Christ. It wasn't it wasn't until after I came to know the gospel of grace that it's all about Jesus and and simply like me focusing on him it it liberated my spirit and brought me into the true joy the true peace and grace that's in Christ and and what's amazing to me is I didn't feel like I had to I didn't feel like I had to really pick at myself and examine myself so much about if I was performing right anymore because what what had happened was I focused more on Christ and he began to do an amazing work on my heart and change me from the inside out and mold my heart into loving the things of God and loving the things of Christ and because of that I I didn't feel so burdensome anymore. It was it was the new heart that God gave me that that loved God and loved following him and loved teaching others about him and just living in that in that freedom. But um even after I came to know the truth as I said before, there was still a lot of baggage I was letting go of. Things about Joseph Smith, things about the Book of Mormon. I remember many occasions I would actually be arguing with my brother about Joseph Smith. You know, he'd bring up things that seemed very controversial about him. And I'd be like, well, yeah, but maybe, you know, so-and-so, etc. And it's kind of interesting because, I mean, yeah, I was always taught that he was a prophet of God. But I never really felt like I had this this warmth to him or this real devotion to him, a real loyalty to him as a prophet. And yet I was still wrestling with my brother almost as if I was like, you know, Joseph Smith's number one fan. <laughs> so, yeah, God really had to uh, wrestle with me a bit to let go of uh, many things that I came to know. I came to find out that we're not actually taught in the Bible. So after that, there was a lot of growth. There was a lot of baggage I let it go of. Eventually, I I even I even like dated this LDS girl. And you know, I guess I kind of justified it in myself that you know, if people call it these days missionary dating, you know, like let's say a Christian they find someone they really like of another faith and they think okay they're really cute they're really nice maybe I can date them and and convert them eventually to my faith well in most cases that does not is, is not a successful thing but if if anything if nothing else what I seen came out of this is God God allowed me to really examine my beliefs and really pursue what I truly believe more to become that, I guess you could say, full-fledged saint who is solid on his beliefs and pushed me into strengthening my testimony 
that not only do I have, you know, these good beliefs, but that I can evangelize and witness to them, to others, and witness to others what God has done in my life and how he has brought me to the true knowledge of who Jesus really is. So that was a big part of that journey. So the, the interfaith dating is testing you, your, your loyalties, your commitments, your faithfulness to Christ? Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I, looking back now, I see that there was a lot of testing, a lot of, I guess, God. God kind of like, you know, knocking on my heart, asking me, what I really believe, just testing me, like, where I really stand with doctrine. Does that answer your... You know, and I and I think there's a lot of people that God does that with, and I think there's a lot of people that God needs to do that with, because it's it can be really easy to to stray or to get caught up in the cares of this world. And... There were some times that I felt like I w it was happening to me too. But it seems like every time, it seems like every time I would kind of come out of maybe like a phase in my life that wasn't the best for me, I would just keep coming back to the same conclusion that that true joy and true happiness and peace is in, in God alone, in Christ alone and not in any anything that this world can offer me. Tell us about the evangelism that you participated in now. You live in Provo, and you're meeting up with saints almost weekly. Uh, how does that go, and has that been encouraging, and what have you learned from it? Oh, absolutely. So one thing that I've learned from evangelism is... You know, once you're out, once you're out there with brothers and sisters sharing the good news about the Lord you serve, it really, it really strengthens your, I guess you could say, devotion to the Master that you're serving. It really, it really reminds you that that you need to have a Christ-like love for those you're talking to. Oh, and another thing. I would say evangelism in whatever form, whether it be street preaching, you know, witnessing to your coworkers, your family, in whatever way, I think it really, it really, there's, there's, a, it really grows you in a way, you know, like what I was saying earlier about strengthening your uh, relationship with you know, your master, the one you're serving. I believe it really strengthens your own testimony to do that work. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me.